Oh, welcome back. First off, I apologize if I sound a little different today. I've come down with the cold. I promise I'm not dying or anything. Just, you know, runny nose, sore throat, the usual stuff. But anyways, uh, we're going to go do sodium and channel gaining today. So you're probably wondering, why do I need to know this? And I know the answer to that. I'm going to be really honest with you. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. It's just in the physiology book. It's something they want you to know. Are you ever going to really need this in real life? Probably not. But you could be tested on this. But yeah, so that's why I'm going to cover it. Because it was on my midterm. So I think it's best we go over it. Okay, so what are we talking about here? So I told you we, we were dealing with sodium channels before. What you probably did not know is what the sodium channel actually looked like. I drew it usually, you know, on uh, in my previous videos, I drew it like this and then, you know, the channels like this. And, yeah, I'd say sodium's going in, right? That's what I would do. And then, you know, erase this. This would be the membrane and that's the channel and sodium's going, you know, in, in this way. Well, the actual, that's like the shorthand version, but the actual way what the sodium channel looks like, it has two gates. It has the M gate and then the H gate. So the M gate is located towards the outside of the cell. So if you're saying like, this is the outside, this is the inside of the cell, right? And then I guess like, extend it like that. Okay. The M gate is on the outside, towards the outside, and the H gate is towards the inside of the cell. There are two gates. The M gate is also known as the activation state, and the H gate is the inactivation state. I know this. I know that sounds gibberish and it makes no sense, but it is kind of confusing. But we're gonna go over it slowly. So each of the uh, each of the the each of the sodium channels is uh, basically individual. So I'm looking at it. We're gonna look at it separately at different voltages. If that makes sense. So the first scenario, when we're at negative seventy millivolts or resting membrane potential. Okay, so this is resting membrane potential. Notice the M gate is closed and the H gate is wide open. So first off, since one of the gates is closed, you immediately can say sodium cannot go through. It's going to be stuck outside. So notice that we call the M gate the activation state or the activation gate or whatever. The activation gate is closed. So we call this the closed state. Okay, no sodium is going to get into the cell. It's not possible. The gate, one of the gates is closed. Now when you move up to negative 50 millivolts, this could be like threshold, for example. Notice both gates are wide open. So sodium can go inside the cell, right? We got sodium traveling through the gate. Both gates, the M gate is open and the H gate is open. We can go straight through. If both, if both, if both gates are open, we call this the open state. Pretty simple, right? Okay. If the voltage is at 30 millivolts, positive 30 millivolts, the M gate is open, so the activation gate is open. So now we look at the H gate. The H gate is closed. So the inactivation gate, right, the H gate, the inactivation gate or state is closed. So if the inactivation gate is the only one that's closed, we call this the inactivated state. Okay. Last but not least, if you go to negative 60 millivolts, so right before uh, resting membrane potential, right? Resting membrane potential is negative 70. We're at negative 60. Both gates are closed. The M gate is closed and the H gate is closed. So sodium cannot go through. It's going to be stuck on the outside. This is the exact same as the top. So this is the closed state. So this is when basically the sodium channels begin to close or are starting to get... Or, this is the first scenario where it's closed at negative 60 millivolts. Why is this important? 
what's mainly important for positive 30 millivolts. So we have our action potential graph we went over last time, right? And we said, you know, it's like, it looks like this, our action potential, and it's like millivolts. This is time. And we were like, this is negative 65, this is probably negative 40, and then zero, and then plus 30. And time, one millisecond, two millisecond, three milliseconds. Okay, so we were like, it goes up, we got our EPSP, it shoots up to negative positive 30, and we go back down, refractive period, and that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice we stop at neg positive 30, right? Well, around there, right? I try to draw it straight. But we stop at positive 30. Well, it's, we stop there is because we got in an activation at positive 30, right? No sodium is going to get in. We said that sodium goes in through here, right? Sodium enters the cell. Well, at positive 30, it stops. This is the reason the voltage doesn't go to infinity, right? The reason the voltage doesn't go like this, right? Ooh the way up and then all the way back down, right? Infinity is because of the positive 30. At positive 30 is when the inactivation gate closes and we're in the inactivated state, so no sodium can, you know, go inside. So that is basically it. <laughs> it's pretty simple, um, but it's just memorization. memorization. This is just for sodium. There's a separate one for potassium, which I'm going to do tomorrow, but um, I hope this was easy. I hope this was helpful, and please like and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you later.